Hello, I'm Dr. Chad Lavender from Marshall University, and we're going to go over the outcomes of standard versus nanoscopic partial meniscectomy. We're going to talk about introduction to nanoarthroscopy, and then outcomes of a recent trial that we performed, and then also the advantages that we saw. So when we talk about goals of nanoarthroscopy, we're using less than three millimeter incisions and instrumentation, especially now with the new nanoresection devices that are less than three millimeters. We're also using less fluid into the joint, which should improve our recovery and our short-term outcomes dramatically. The nanoscope camera has changed how we can do arthroscopy and the procedures that we can do with the nanoscope continue to evolve. The addition of the high flow sheet, the curve sheet, has greatly improved our visualization, our flow, and it allows for more traditional viewing angles. One of the things I'd like to point out about the nanoscope, it has a 84% reduction in the invasive area. This becomes very important because we're doing less soft tissue trauma to the joint, to the soft tissues around the joint, and this really improves our outcomes as you'll see in our clinical trial. I use the nanoscope daily in the operating room for my standard repairs, reconstructions, and as you can see by this video, we can place the video up onto the standard displays in our operating room. And we can use multiple views uh, to, uh, simultaneously, and that really changes how I can do my repairs and reconstructions. When we look at the traditional arthroscope, it has an 80 to 90 degree field of view versus the nanoscope, which has a 120 degree field of view, a significant improvement. So when we talk about the evolution of knee arthroscopy and really knee surgery and surgery in general, we went from open techniques, as you see on the left, to more minimally invasive techniques, as you see in the center of the screen, to a standard arthroscopy on the right. But now with the nanoscope, it's taken us to a whole new level, nearly incisionless through just needle sticks. This is an amazing trend, and we feel like this is the future of arthroscopy. So this is our original technique article published in Arthroscopy Techniques in 2020, Incisionless Partial Medial Meniscectomy. And this technique is the basis of the outcomes that I'm going to show you, which we use this technique for our clinical trial. And we'll also use the same technique in the future or the prospective randomized multi-center clinical trial. So based off of that technique, we started a prospective series. We had three surgeons, myself and Dr. Jasko at Marshall University, along with Dr. Argentar from Washington Hospital Center. We did a prospective consecutive series. So we did 19 consecutive nanoscopes and then 19 consecutive standard knee arthroscopy meniscectomies. Important to point out, there were no significant differences preoperatively when we looked at the two cohorts. So their age, the standard was 48, the nano arthroscopy group 43. The VAS preoperative scores were exactly the same at six, and the Goose score preoperatively was 37% versus 44%. Again, no significant differences between the two groups preoperatively. So we looked at operative outcomes, and we looked at narcotic pills in the first 24 hours. And in the standard group, those patients took 2.35 pills versus the nanoarthroscopy group, only one. That was a very significant difference. We also looked at the fluid used. So the fluid used in the standard group was over 1,600 milliliters versus the nanoarthroscopy group, which was 473 milliliters. And this points out you do not need to fill the joint with abundance amount of fluid to have good fluid dynamics. And because of this change in fluid, we feel that that's why we see the improved early outcomes that I'll mention in the next couple slides. We also looked at tourniquet time. Tourniquet time was not significantly different between the two techniques. So let's talk about the postoperative outcomes. Well, at two weeks, we recorded VAS scores and CUS scores, and there were significant differences in both in favor of the nanoarthroscopy group. The VAS was one versus in the standard group, 2.56, and the CUS score is dramatically different, 79% in the nanoarthroscopy group versus the standard group at 57%. We followed that up at six weeks with VAS and CUS scores and found those scores at six weeks to not be significantly different. So what does that tell us? That on average, the nanoarthroscopy group improves to near normal at just two weeks. So what are the advantages to nanotechnology in the knee? Well, it gives us a no incision percutaneous approach 
which as we showed in our outcomes can lead to an earlier return to sport and activity and improved outcomes early on. We think that that's because of less fluid, which we also showed in our trial, and less swelling. This leads to improved pain as shown by our two-week VAS pain scores. Also, theoretically, it should have a decreased risk of infection and other complications. So for the future, with the release of the nano needle, this will drastically change how and where we can do uh, needle arthroscopy. It's going to be truly a needle arthroscopy experience. Ergonomics of the nano needle are greatly improved, as well as different links, which will allow us to get into different joints from different angles. So for the future, we're getting ready to start a multi-center prospective randomized clinical trial on our nanoscopic partial meniscectomy versus standard arthroscopy uh, based on these results that I shared with you today. And we really look forward to continuing to see the results from nanoarthroscopy and that improved pain, that improved return to sport, and those two-week differences that we showed in our clinical trial.